Okay, today we're going to take a look at transcription. So transcription is where our friend Jack, if you watched the previous video, Jack is going to go to the library and the librarian sitting behind the counter, standing behind the counter, says to Jack, you cannot do anything with that book except take it over there, copy out the pieces that you want, and then give me back the book. So that's what's going to happen in transcription. We have a piece of double-stranded DNA, and there's a reason, a region of this double-stranded DNA that for some reason we are interested in. So we're interested in that section right there. This is what we're going to call a gene. A gene is a piece of DNA that for some reason gets turned or gets the information gets turned into or copied into RNA. We don't know why it gets copied into RNA. We'll talk about that a little bit later. For now, all we know is that it's important. It's something useful. We need to do something with it. And this gene, these two locations that I've marked off in the gene, these are what we consider to be the start and stop of the gene, but they're not called the start and stop of the gene in our terminology. They're called the promoter and the terminator. These are the signals in DNA that are going to attract a bunch of different proteins. The proteins are going to congregate in segments around promoter and terminator, and they're going to tell other proteins to turn on and to turn off. So when we're looking at our double-stranded piece of DNA, it's important to know the direction that we're working with to know which of these two strands is going to be the one that gets worked on during transcription. So we're going to call it just arbitrarily that's the five prime and that's the three prime at that end and so we have the reverse over here that's the three prime and that's the five prime of that end so here from promoter to terminator what's actually going to physically do the copying here it's jack it's jack's hand he's going to write his letters onto his page but the book is going to stay the way he got it from the librarian over here we are going to have there is an enzyme called RNA polymerase and RNA polymerase is going to kind of set itself up right there at the promoter and RNA polymerase as a polymerase makes a polymer and in this case it makes a polymer of RNA or it makes a long chain of RNA. RNA polymerase is going to gather a bunch of different pieces it's going to wait at the promoter for a signal. If you've watched the animations that I've been posting, you've probably seen this in action already. It's going to wait for a signal, and once that signal is received, it's going to move down the chain from promoter to terminator. That's how we're going to know the direction of the mRNA that we are going to make, from promoter to terminator. Now, RNA polymerase is going to build a piece of RNA, and I'm going to draw that here in red. It's going to peak draw a piece of it's going to build a piece of RNA and it's going to build from the 5 prime to the 3 prime. So this right here will be the 5 prime end of that piece of RNA and this piece here will be the 3 prime end. That's what RNA polymerase is going to do. Now RNA polymerase is going to build its RNA attached to the strand that has the opposite direction. So if this strand is 5 to 3, moving like that, then it's actually going to build off of the strand that, when we move this way, is the opposite, 3 to 5, and that's the bottom, 3 to 5. So RNA polymerase is going to match bases with the 3 to 5. Anywhere down here, anywhere down here on the 3 to 5 strand, there's an A. RNA polymerase is going to match it up with a U. Anyway, there's a C, RNA polymerase is going to match it up with a G. Anywhere there's a G, RNA polymerase is going to match it up with a C. And anywhere there's a T, RNA polymerase is going to match it up with an A. Now notice that the letters on DNA are A, C, G, and T, but the letters on RNA are U, G, C, and A. U and T replace each other in RNA and in DNA. So we are going to move from promoter, that's the key here, from promoter to terminator, and it's going to build its strand with the what we call complementary basis to the DNA that's in the opposite direction. So 3 to 5, moving this way is the opposite of 5 to 3, moving this way, and so it's going to build its complementary basis. So just as a note, if we have in the DNA these bases, 
in the RNA, we are going to get these bases put in place. So if you have an A in the DNA, you put a U because U replaces T. So you would normally put a T, but in this case you put a U. And then C and G are the same, C and G, and T, you would put an A. There's often a mistake here. Students see a T in the DNA and they put a U in the RNA and that's wrong. It's T for A. There's still an A base in RNA. There's not a T base in RNA. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write out a double-stranded chain here. I'm going to do it randomly just off the top of my head. And what I want you to do once I've done that is I want you to pause the video and tell me what RNA chain is going to be made if we have that piece of DNA. So here's my uh, three prime, five prime. We're going to say A, C, C, A, T, 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 T. G, C, 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 A, T, A. The order of the letters in this example does not matter at all. It could be any base after or before any other base. It doesn't make a big difference. And we're going to write in the complement. So you might want to pause here and write in the complementary bases for the DNA. So we're doing double-stranded DNA. So I'm going to write them in. You can take a minute to try it yourself and see if you get the same answer as me. And if I make any mistakes, which happens all the time, you can leave me a message somewhere and let me know. Okay, so this is our piece of double-stranded DNA. I'm going to call this side the promoter, just like I did over there, just to make it easier for us to recognize. And this side is the terminator. So here's your promoter end, here's your terminator end. In real double-stranded DNA, it would be much longer than this. It would be millions, possibly tens of millions or hundreds of millions of bases long. We're only doing this little section here, promoter and terminator. So what will be the RNA sequence that comes out of this one? So you have to think, what direction is RNA polymerase gonna move? What direction is RNA polymerase going to make its strand of RNA? And then, which of these two chains is it going to build the complementary basis from? So pause the video, give that a shot. I'll give it a five minute little gap over here, and then I'll give you the answer. Okay, hopefully you actually paused it. Uh, so in my piece of double-stranded DNA, I'm looking at promoter to terminator, so I know that RNA polymerase is going to move this way. R N A P is going to move that way. So if RNA polymerase moves this way, then it's going to build its strand of RNA from five prime all the way to three prime. So that's the strand of RNA that I'm going to make. That's the only direction that the polymerases that we've been working with move. They always move. They always make from, from five prime to three prime. So I know that I need to use the opposite direction strand to put the complementary bases in. So I'm going to use the three to five. Here's three, that's five, that's the top strand of these two. So everywhere I have an A, I'm going to put in a U. So my first base is U. Then everywhere I have a C, I'm going to put in a G. I'm going to put in a G. And then a U, because I have an A. Then for a T, I'm going to put in an A. And then another A, A, A. And I'm going to put in C, to complementary to G then G complementary to C, and two more, because I have three C's in a row. Then I am going to put in a U, then I'm gonna put in an A, and I'm gonna put in a U, and that's my last base. So notice from five prime to three prime, this is my strand of RNA. And I want you to notice two things. Number one, I want you to notice that it is complementary to the three to five. That was how, hopefully how you did it. But you might notice that it's the same information as the five to three. And I hope that makes sense because the three to five over here and the five to three over here, they have complementary bases to each other. So if you're gonna do a complementary match to the top strand, it should be the same as this bottom strand except for the T and the U swap. Everything else should be the same. So notice, if we read the bottom strand, T, G, G, T, I have the same thing, U, G, G, U, and then four A's, four A's, C, G, 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 U for T, A, so it's the same. So the information 
in the top strand is the matching, or sorry, is the complementary information. And this strand that we use to find the complementary information is called the template strand. It's the template strand because it physically is used as a template. Like they actually come in contact with each other, these bases, the top strand and the new mRNA that's made. The bottom strand is the strand that's often more useful for scientists because it has the same code as the RNA that we're gonna make. And so this is called the coding strand. So both of these strands are useful. You can do it either way. You can take the top strand and put the complementary bases in. You can take the bottom strand or the five to three rather than the three to five. You can take the five to three and just replace the T's with U's and you will get the same code every time. Whichever way you feel comfortable with doing it is totally fine. This piece of RNA right here has a special name. This piece of RNA is called the primary transcript. It turns out when our friend Jack over here went to the library, he copied everything and he copied it on loose leaf paper and that loose leaf paper isn't great. And this is what we have coming out, primary transcript. Primary transcript. And this is okay, this is good, but we have to do some stuff to it because Jack is gonna walk outside and when Jack walks outside, it's raining and Jack doesn't have an umbrella and he needs to do something. And Jack has tons of extra information that maybe he doesn't need and he might wanna get rid of those extra pages so he doesn't have to pay a translator to do all that extra work. So we're gonna work on the primary transcript next and we're going to turn our primary transcript into our useful piece of RNA.